Hey everyone, so I want to take this video to just summarize the properties of exponential functions. So uh, over the last week or so we've been talking a bit about exponential functions and we discussed how they all have the same format for their equation and that format is y is equal to a times b to the power of x. And we've discussed a little bit about what the a and the b value will do in each of these cases uh, but we're going to kind of summarize all the properties of all different possible exponential equations, uh, up, exponential functions rather, up to this point, okay? So first of all, the domain of an exponential function. So the domain of all exponential functions, unless of course you're talking about a real world scenario, it's always going to be the same, okay? And that domain is going to be all real numbers, okay? So the idea being that you can substitute any x value into an exponential function and you should be able to get a y value associated with it. That makes sense given that, you know, you could po definitely have a positive uh, whole numbers as exponents, that would make sense. But we've also talked about what happens when you have negative uh, exponents, right? So we know we can evaluate those. And we've also just recently talked about what happens when you have rational exponents. So uh, pretty much any kind of x value you can get, you can substitute in, you'll be able to get some kind of y value associated with it. Okay? Uh, also, the uh, the horizontal asymptote is one thing to note. So we've taken a look at multiple different uh, exponential functions. We've noticed that there's sort of a, a, a line, uh, a horizontal line that they tend to approach, right? They get closer and closer to, but they'll never actually touch. There's always going to be some kind of gap. Okay, and that's called the horizontal asymptote. So for any... Uh, exponential function that hasn't been transformed or anything like that, they all have the same horizontal asymptote and it's going to be at y is equal to zero, so it's the x-axis essentially. And also, uh, the y-intercept of an exponential function is always going to be at zero and a. Now at this point you might be asking yourself a couple of questions. First of all, what's the range of an exponential function, okay? Uh, so I've included that just underneath the domain there. Uh, well, the range of the, an exponential function is actually going to kind of depend on your values of a and b. So we're going to take the next slide to talk a little bit about the range, okay? So that's the, the next uh, question we're going to answer. But before that, actually, let's talk about why the y-intercept is going to be at a, a value of a, okay? So as we said, the equation of an exponential function is y is equal to a times b to the power of x. Well, a y-intercept occurs when you have an x value of 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to substitute 0 in for x. So we get y is equal to a times b to the power of 0. And as we, of course, have mentioned, when you take anything to the power of 0, it's equal to 1. So that's y is equal to uh, a times 1, which is just a. So that's why we get a y-intercept at 0, a. So now that we've talked about why the y-intercept is at a, let's talk a little bit about the range. Okay, so there's four different possibilities here because we could have different A values and different B values. So first we're going to talk about what happens when you have A is bigger than 0 and B is bigger than 1. Then we're going to talk about what happens when you have A is bigger than 0 and B between 0 and 1. And then A less than 0, so a negative A value and where B is uh, between 0 and 1. And lastly, when you have a negative A value and when you have a B value larger than 1. Okay, so... Let's draw a grid in for each of these guys. So let's look at the first guy. So if we have a is bigger than 0 and b is bigger than 1. So the graph of that is going to look something like that. Okay, um, You're going to notice that we're going to have a dotted line. I'm putting it as a dotted line, but we're going to have a line that it approaches on the left side but never actually touches. There's always going to be a small gap. That's our asymptote. It's a horizontal asymptote at y equals to 0. Okay, So having said this, what would the range be? Well, we know that the range is not going to include a y value of 0 because that's part of the asymptote, and we know that the graph doesn't touch the asymptote, so there's no y value of 0. But as you can kind of tell, um, the, the graph is entirely above the x-axis, and that means that we have y values basically that are bigger than 0. So that means that our range is going to be uh, y is an element of, of the real number system such that y is greater than 0. Or in other words, all possible y values bigger than 0. Okay, so that's the range for the first case. Let's take a look at the second case. Okay, so in the second case, we have a graph that looks like this. This is what we typically called exponential uh, decay. Um, and in this case, you notice that we're still going to have an asymptote right, at y equals to 0. Um, and the graph is entirely above the x-axis still. So just like before, we have y is an element of the real number system such that y is greater than 0. 
All right, next case. So we're going to have something that looks like this. So it's basically uh, just like a, an exponential decreasing question, but it's been reflected. Now, notice that, again, it approaches the asymptote from below this time. Um, but since everything is below the x-axis, right, that means that we have only negative y values. And so our range is y is an element of the real number system such that y is less than 0. Okay, and our last case... We have something that looks like this, and again, it approaches the asymptote from below, uh, but everything is negative, so we have y is an element of the real number system such that y is less than zero. So these are the four possibilities. So you might be actually be asking yourself why I organized them in this particular way, uh, and the reason why is uh, because of the following. You're going to notice that... Um, over here, right, these two that we have here on top and bottom here, uh, if you start on the left side of the graph and you kind of follow it along, it looks like the function is gradually getting bigger and bigger, or it's basically growing, right? It's going upwards, essentially. Um, so because of that, we want to say that these are both examples of increasing exponential functions, right? Because they are going up as you travel towards the right. Right, as you make your x values more positive. And over here, these two here, you're going to notice that as you start on the left and then work your way to the right side of the graph, the graphs are going down. And because of that, we say that these are decreasing exponential functions. Okay, So this has just been a bit, a bit of a video summarizing and outlining the different properties of exponential functions. I uh, hope it helps, guys. Take care.